Welcome back to the Anxious Tradeswoman podcast, where I, your host, Louise, as a party, share what I've learned through the years, through the tears, so you don't have to. This is episode 24, overbearing help slash mansplaining. Uh, I'd like to thank this week's, this episode's supporter, SheWear Australia. I'll talk a little bit about them later on. So overbearing help slash mansplaining. So, or over explaining. So what I mean by this is when someone comes to you, so let's go overbearing help first. So when someone is like, hey, I'll give you a hand with that. I'll give you a hand with that. I'll give you a hand with that. And before you know it, your job's done and you didn't actually do any of it. And you know that you can do it yourself, but this person is trying to be helpful and you might be in a position where you're either caught off guard or you don't want to hurt their feelings. Then we have mansplaining, which is over explaining. Hey, I'll, how are you going with that? You know, you just need to do this, 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 this and this. Yes, I know, I know, I know. So with these two things, um, it can tie into the um, having difficult conversations that we talk about in episode nine. I know I reference that episode all the time. But one thing that we need to be careful of is when this is happening, especially the overbearing help, is as an apprentice, it might take away from you learning the things that you need to do to do your trade. You might not get the experience that you need. So for me, this happened really specifically um, on an instance with differentials, Um, so diffs in cars. Um, and trucks and because I didn't work on diffs during my apprenticeship because I was working at Cummins on an engine manufacturer the only time I had the chance to experience putting a diff together was at TAFE and then a few years later I was assessed during the world skills competition on putting a diff together and I hadn't realized that this had happened or was an issue because I had never put had to do a diff before then. So let's go back. At TAFE, I'm the only girl in the class. I'm a fair bit smaller than everyone else. The diffs we're working on were heavy vehicle diffs, so either one strong guy or a crane or two people to lift it in. And with me, they were like, oh, just watch us do it. Like, here you go, oh, I'll help you. I'm like as tall as him, so it'll be easier to lift it in. And before I knew it, because I didn't have that many opportunities to learn that task, only the ones presented to me at TAFE, at Technical College, I missed that. And I didn't even realise. I was like, yeah, look, I can see it going together. Like, I didn't think there was a problem there. Um, And then a few years later, when we were doing the Global Skills Challenge, which is a competition before the international competition, um, which is like the final selection for... Um, to get into to compete for the international world skills competition I was putting a diff together there I had to pull it apart inspect it and put it back together and I just I didn't know how it was supposed to feel I didn't know if it felt off I didn't like because you put the um, crown wheel in and then it sits in bearings and then I couldn't seem to get the bearing caps in correctly and I was th- I was panicking, I was panicking. And then I just had, like, it just set me off. I just had a meltdown. I was really struggling with the pressure that I was putting on myself at the time. Um, so that in that situation, having that come up. And I was like, how the hell did I get here? How did I get, this is a simple, it's literally like two gears going together with a bearing. How do I not know how to put this together? I know in theory, I can tell you the theory, I can tell you the tensions. And tell you what this is supposed to, how to test it, but I had no idea how it felt going together because I hadn't done it before, because I had some of that overbearing help, which then missed me out on the opportunity. Now, in the situation, I recognise now that I was doing the best I could with what I had, and that also the guys thought they were doing, they were helping, right? Helping is good. We want to make sure if we find ourselves in a situation where we're being overhelped that we have a conversation about it. Like I said, difficult conversations. But with this one, this one can be a little bit different. The structure of it, I like to 
go in and just talk about when we bring this up with people how we are capable of asking for help when we need it so when someone comes to help you and there's something that you want to do for yourself or you want to see if you can do it yourself you can say they could come over for example role play hey can I help you hey no it's all good if I need a hand I'll come ask you're not like straight up saying no piss off Um, because sometimes it feels like you do want to say that but you're saying no thank you I I will help I will ask you for help if I need it so you're acknowledging that you know you can go like they're gonna you you know that they can help you and if you need it they will help you Um, I know pretty much the other thing is telling them to piss off so just having that in your back pocket if you find yourself in this situation over here no I don't need any help at the moment. If I do need help, I will come and get you. Or even if they're like, are you sure you can do that? You can say something like, I want to give it a go on my own, but if I'm struggling, I'll come and get you to help me. Because you're preferencing that I want to give it a go. And a lot of times it's good to have these statements in your back pocket because sometimes this can catch you off guard. So having them there... um, have them in your back pocket very similar to the mansplaining or the over explaining where someone is going through a task hey I'll just tell you how to do that again blah 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 blah. same thing thanks for letting me know Um, I think I've got it down pat but if I need any help I'll come and ask you that way it's it's like a polite way to say no thanks piss off Um, (laughs) and i like with this, it can be so sneaky and it can catch you off guard. That's why I give like the little phrases that can really help if you have them in your back pocket. And there's no shame if you've gotten through your apprenticeship or you realise, shit, this has been happening to me for ages. I actually don't know how to do A, B and C. With this situation, I'm um, going into a, a like kind of an offset story. So like I said, I did my apprenticeship on engines, the only area that I had um, and his time to do anything else on the trucks was when I was at technical college and there was a few instances of this overbearing help at TAFE. Uh, I did find an employer that I said, you know, hey, I only have engine experience. I've got the whole qualification, but I've done it like once in four years. And they said, yeah, we'll take you on. We'll teach you it. And I think it's really important to remember that in the trades, areas do become specialised, like workshops become specialised, then you only get experience on that area. But that's well known in the industry. It's known that if you're going to jump into another job that you probably don't have experience on that set of equipment or on that brand or on that style of assembly. I'm trying to include many trains here, but mechanical is my is my forte. So different types of equipment, different types of brands, yeah, that is known. So don't put too much pressure on yourself if you have found yourself in this situation. Be honest about it. Hey, uh, I know you. we would have saw my resume. I've worked here. Um, I don't have much experience on A, B and C, but I'm really, really keen to learn it. And they generally are like, yeah, sure, if you're keen, like you've got this background, mechanical knowledge or carpentry knowledge or bricklaying knowledge. I just walked the br- – I'm – Where the studio is that I'm recording the podcast, it's on a TAFE precinct and there was bricklayer stuff there. So bricklaying and carpentry, they were doing like, I think they were doing roof stuff. I only saw them from a distance anyway. So they're the examples that are popping to mind. They know that you have, if you have some core concepts down and you've obviously got your trade, it's easy to add on and build. You're not starting from scratch. You've got a solid four years experience and might be on a particular thing. So you're an expert in it. So we can start tacking things on. And like I said, it's well known in the industry. So don't let it hold you back from going for a different experience or a different job if that is what you want to do. Okay, so let's close this up. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you've got overbearing help or a lot of mansplaining and you want to stop it, a few statements that you can borrow is, Hey, thanks for offering for your help. If I need a hand, I'll come and get you. Or, hey, thanks for explaining that to me. Um, I think I got it down pat. 
but I'll come and get you if I need anything. Polite way to say, please stop. Piss off. All right, and now we'll go to this episode's supporter, which is SheWear. So SheWear are safety work boots that have been designed by women to fit and look good on women. Not only do they have specially designed workwear boots for women, but they also have a wide range of women's workwear from a range of brands all in one spot on one website. So um, I do have a code. It's Louise A. Um, if you'd like to use that, uh, the link is in the podcast description. And also, if you'd like any help or support with this process, you can join my free Facebook community, Tradeswomen Owning Their Power. And if you like one-on-one support or you're a business wanting to make the workplace better for tradeswomen and minorities, you can inquire through my website, louiseasaparty.com. And just a reminder that the Tradeswomen Owning Their Power coaching scholarships are open for nominations. Um, It's for my six-month coaching program where you can apply to get it free at charge. The, I have a whole episode explaining what it is, which is episode 21. Um, and you can message me if you've got any questions. If you have missed the applications and you're interested in still working with me, send me a message. I'd love to have a chat with you. And that is all for episode 24. I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye.